Welcome back Colorful Quilters. This is the second segment of our binding video series. We are looking at binding our quilt from start to finish, all of the details, all of the steps to get a great looking binding on your quilt. In the first video, we did the cutting section for straight grain binding. I also showed you how to sew the strips together to make one long strip to go all the way around your quilt how to join those ends so that you get a nice smooth finish all the way around without lumps or bumps, and how to sew the strip on first to the front using your sewing machine and to the back of the quilt using hand stitches. For this segment, I'm going to show you how to do the finishing step with your sewing machine. So that means we're going to sew the binding to the front of the quilt and to the back of the quilt with our sewing machine. It's super quick and easy. I'm also going to show you how to do the cutting for the fabric on bias in case you want to use bias strips for curves at your corners or if you want to fussy cut a stripe to be on the bias. Um, or if you just prefer to do your binding on the bias, that's fine too. So um, we have been working on binding this um, cute little hexagon, Grandmother's Flower Garden Quilt. So um, like I said, in the first section, I showed you how to do it by hand. In this one, we're gonna actually finish this quilt um, by sewing the binding on with our sewing machine. And then I'm going to show you how to get a little bit different look um, by cutting your striped binding on the bias. Okay, so again, if you haven't watched the first video, be sure and tune in there. That's going to give you the foundational steps of cutting and sewing your strips together and sewing them to the front of your quilt. Um, right now, we are going to get started on sewing the binding to the back of the, fil the quilt and getting it completely finished. Okay, here we go. Okay. We are ready to do a demonstration of the ma machine method of sewing down the back of your binding. Okay, so again, let's talk about thread. I decided to do the green thread so that it has a little bit of contrast. That way you'll be able to see it. And just because this is somewhat of a playful, really colorful quilt, I thought that would be a fun addition to do a contrasting thread. You can, of course, use um, something that blends in with your binding fabric as well. Um, now, this is where you want to think about, since you're machine quilting, or since you're machine sewing instead of hand stitching, the stitches are going to show on the front of your quilt since you're machine stitching instead of hand stitching. So for this um, method, you do need to consider what you have in your bobbin thread, okay? So if the borders of your quilt are a solid or a very busy floral, you might choose a, a colored thread that blends with the solid fabric or a variegated that blends in with the floral, um, just whatever you have going. My personal preference is to use clear thread, monofilament thread. So I have two, t I have two varieties. I have one that's kind of dark. Um, it's sort of a smoky color and that's good for dark fabrics, but it does show up on lighter fabrics. So I, t I save that for darker fabrics. And um, in case you're interested, this is a superior thread and it's just called Monopoly. And I know that it comes in different colors. Um, my most common go-to is this lighter, um, like white clear thread. And it is by Wonder. So it's Wonder Invisible Thread by YLI. Okay, so this is what I wind into my binding or into my bobbin um, for my machine. And it's probably it's hard to see because it is so fine, but it is literally like the the texture and um, weight of almost like hair, like a heavy, like a coarse hair. So it really blends in nicely um, and just you know, it doesn't show up, it doesn't add anything to the front of your quilt. It almost just looks like more of the quilt, like a quilting. So um, that's what I prefer to do. So I have loaded, particularly um, because the edges of my quilt are all different colors, so there's no way I could choose something that's gonna blend in. 
um, and I don't and I definitely don't want it to be something that'll stand out so I've already put into my bobbin my clear white thread I've loaded my machine with my cute little green thread all right and the process is exactly the same as what we did for hand stitching in that you are going to carefully turn turn your binding and again this is where binding clips and pins might come in handy um, I typically just hold it and just stitch kind of slowly to make sure that I'm holding it in place and keeping my strip straight okay so the hardest place is just where you start because that's where you have to really hold it in place there's nothing there yet so I'm going to place it under my presser foot and put my needle down and this is another situation where if your sewing machine has a needle down feature you are going to want to use it so take a couple of stitches then back stitch put my needle down and we're off now you want to be really careful that your binding strip is over the seam where you sewed the front of your binding onto your quilt and that you're, when you stitch you're stitching through the quilt and not through the binding on the other side okay so every once in a while I'll accidentally cut it a little too close and I get a few stitches on the binding and I don't I don't cry too much about that but I really want to try and keep my my sewing just inside almost like you're sewing in the ditch be on the front of the quilt you're stitching in the ditch between the binding strip and your quilt okay we are approaching the corner and just as we did with the hand stitching I am going to hold the hold the binding strip down as I approach the corner but stop an inch or so before I get to it so that I can fold this end over just like I did with the with the, when I was hand stitching okay so can you see how I've got that folded and placed so that it's in that miter position and I've got a nice a nice smooth corner there and then I'll resume sewing and sew right up to where the two strips meet at the corner and keep my needle down and turn Do you see how I very carefully held that fold in place, um, keeping my fingers out of the way? That starts to get a, to be a really tight space to maneuver, and I don't want to sew through my finger. Um, if you have a stylus, or I've even used a pin or the point of um, some really fine scissors, if you find that you're struggling to hold that in place where you want it to be. But once you have stitched through the binding where it's folded then you can pivot and just start sewing straight forward again and there you have turned your corner and you just continue continue to spread out your quilt keeping it straight and just and continue to fold your binding back, keeping that seam line covered from the front, and just sew right along that edge. And I bet you're curious to see what this looks like, all finished and from the front. So let's take a look. 
All right, let's take a look at how this um, got finished up. So you can see I added my tag there. Um, I laid it out flat for this one so you can see Color Girl and my name. Um, but you can see where I just top stitched right along the edge of my binding strip with the green thread. So it stands out a little bit more than it would if I used pink thread to blend in which I usually do use thread that blends in, but I thought for this one it'd be kind of fun to do something um, that shows up a little bit more in contrasts. But so that's the back. I wanted to show you how that corner looks where we turn to the corner. And then of course, even better is how great the front looks. Um, you can see how I used the clear thread in my bobbin and it just ends up making a little straight line of sewing along the edge of my binding and just blends right in with the fabric so it's nothing that is standing out which is exactly how I want it. You just about don't know that it's there. Okay, so this is how our finished piece looks with our machine sewn binding. Okay, and now to show you our second method for cutting binding, this time on the bias of the fabric. And again, this is gonna be personal preference and also um, the circumstances. Like I told you earlier, there are times when bias binding is a good idea. Um, in this particular one, I am going to cut it on the bias because I wanna show you how it makes the stripes look a little bit different. Since these are stripes that run straight of grain, um, if you cut them on the bias, you get a little bit different effect when you sew it on the fabric. So first of all, you'll start with um, the amount of fabric that you need for binding the quilt uh, based on the size that you have. Now, typically you should be able to use the same amount of bias binding as you would for the amount of fabric you'd need for straight binding. However, I do recommend buying a little bit extra if you're going to use bias binding so that you can make longer strips and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so first of all I'm going to unfold my fabric and spread it out and I'm going to well let's I'm going to first of all cut off the selvage. I don't want that selvage edge on there. So cut one side of the selvage off. Fold your fabric like you're making a half square triangle. Okay, so since I'm left-handed, I need mine to be like this. So what this does is it gives me, gives me a 90 degree angle here where the corners meet and a 45 degree angle or my bias angle up here where it's folded. Okay. And if you're using a very large piece of fabric, you can then fold it again and just keeping those, those edges all lined up. Okay. So now I have a 90 degree angle here and here, and I'm going to end up cutting on a 45 degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the 45 degree line on my ruler to line up with the edge of my fabric. And then find the two and a quarter inch line for cutting. So I've got 45 degrees here and two and a quarter here and cut. Okay, so this gives, I'm gonna keep this, this the way that it is, keep that folded like that. But basically this gives me my first strip that's actually double wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that again, fold that in half just so that I can cut it down to two and a quarter so that I have two, two and a quarter inch strips. Okay. Now this one where it was folded at the corner, now 
is at a, um, you have 45 degree angles on all of your strips, the ends of them. Okay, so set those aside. Those are going to be your longest strips. Then come back to the fabric that where you just cut it and get it nice and smooth and do the same thing again. Two and a quarter, 45 degree angles and two and a quarter. And that's going to give me another long strip and the top one is getting shorter. This is the piece coming off of where it's folded. But I can keep working along there. Now there's going to come a point where this, those um, second strips are going to get shorter than what I want to use unless I absolutely have to if I don't have enough fabric. So let's cut one more and see how long it is. Oops, gosh. I should have ironed my... All right, so again, make sure I've got my 45 degree angle here and my two and a quarter inch line along the, the edge of my fabric and make your cut. Okay, so that gives me one long strip and then one that's a little bit shorter. Okay, so this one's still still pretty usable, but let's check this out. But if I keep cutting off of this, they're going to start getting pretty short. So I'm going to set this aside um, as a scrap. And if I have to cut one more little piece to make enough, I'll do that. But otherwise, I'll just put that in my scrap bin. Okay, now I'm going now my my fabric, I've got this long bias edge here. So since it's too long for my ruler and to fit on my cutting table, and it's a little easier to manage if it's shorter, I'm gonna fold it in half again and start over. Cut my two and a quarter and my 45 degree line. Okay, now that seems like it's Sometimes these bias edges can get a little wonky, but you want to make sure that you're cutting them straight. So 45 degrees, two and a quarter. Okay, so I can just keep cutting strips like this the length of my, my fabric or for as many strips as I need. Um, now this is where you'll see one of the disadvantages of using bias strips for your binding um, is that you do end up with these scraps at the end, these you know funky triangle pieces, and they're fine to use for scraps in another project. But um, sometimes people feel like this this takes up more fabric than necessary to use this method. But it's a good skill, it's good to know how to do it and to, um, to have it in case there's a situation where you want to have bias binding. Okay, so I'll just keep cutting strips until I have enough. And then from here on out, uh, once I take these to my sewing machine, the steps are going to be exactly the same as they were for sewing the straight. Now since I cut the strips on the bias, the, the ends are already angled. I don't have to do that this time. But again, once I go to the sewing machine, I'll just line those angled ends up, just like I did before, and sew, and then add another one to the end, and then another one to that end, until I have a nice long piece. Then press it and apply it to the quilt, the same as I did the other. Okay? We did it. Thank you for sticking with me for this long. Um, hopefully this has been a really comprehensive um, short course on getting that perfect binding on your quilt. This is a step that's so essential to quilt making and having a really nice looking well-crafted finish but also something that a lot of quilters struggle to master at the beginning. So um, let's take a look at our finished quilt. Um, so we did our hexagon quilt with um, the straight green binding. And as you can see, 
Um, I showed you in the video before um, the the little straight bind the the straight stripes on the binding just wrap around the quilt in a really cute candy stripe. Um, I want to show you what it looks like when we do a bias cut binding. Like I just showed you how to do the cutting, um, and then you do the machine sewing the same way. But once it's finished, your stripes kind of wrap around your quilt when they're cut on the bias like this. And I think that that just that gives a really cute effect um, if that's what you're looking for. Some stripes on fabric are printed this way so you can cut them straight of grain and you still get this bias effect. For those that are printed straight you do have to cut them on the bias to get this effect. But really cute. Um, make sure to watch both videos in this series. Um, the first video was all about um, cutting and piecing your binding, preparing your quilt, and machine sewing it onto the front, and then finishing it off by hand. Um, in this video, we did the machine finishing. I hope that this has been useful for you. Please tell me what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear if you are able to have success with this or if you have more questions. Um, if you like these videos, I hope that you'll consider supporting me so I can keep making them. Um, shop for fabric and patterns on my website, colorgirlquilts.com. Subscribe to Color Girl here on YouTube for more video tutorials to come, and check out um, previous playlists. Um, for this little quilt that I showed you here, I do have the instructions for making this one um, from cutting to piecing and finishing. So um, if you want to make one like that too, it's here in the playlist for the Classic Curves Ruler. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.